Hi boys and girls, Miss Tabor here, hoping that I didn't slightly cut myself off in the beginning as I've been doing on all of my other videos. Can't seem to find the right trick. Now, um, I am recording this video again right after doing my last lesson. I find that it's really helpful to carry over um, all the great knowledge and instruction that we've been doing. And today we are going to recite that sentence to share with you why, well, to, why I'm sharing this lesson with you and how I have permission to use it. I bet you can guess it's because I have permission from the publisher Heinemann. So there you have it. By the end of all of this, you'll be able to recite that sentence all by yourself without me. <laughs> um, so today we are, we are going to continue our phonics lesson, adding endings to words. Last time we added the ER ending to show comparison between something and something else. Today we're going to add a slightly different ending to show um, the most or of all. Something that has the most or something that has all of it. Which I'm curious if you can guess what that ending is. And then after that we will get into a new story. It is a traditional classic tale, meaning there's a lot of different versions of this specific story. Uh, Fontes and Pinnell has created this one of their own, so it's just another version to add to our other collections. If you enjoy this story, there are many other versions online that are read out loud, or maybe you have one sitting in your own um, house somewhere. So let's go ahead and get started with our endings. Okay, remember we have our base word, and then last time we added the, en the ending er, which was er, showing uh, a, just a comparison, fast, faster, slow, slower, tall, taller, small, smaller, big, bigger, funny, funnier, silly, sillier, easy, easier. Phew, if you can go ahead and read those, awesome. See if you can read it faster than I am. Oh, I just said faster. But are you the fastest? That gets us into our ending that we are going to work on today, the EST. This ending really shows um, most or all. So if we talk about our base word fast, add est, we have fastest. For example, I don't know, the cat is the fastest of all, meaning it is, or cat, the cat is the fastest, period. Okay, let's take slow. Slowest, the turtle is the slowest, which makes you think that nothing else is slower than the turtle. Think about that comparison. Tall, tallest, small, smallest, big, biggest. Remember what we did previously to that G? We had to double the final consonant or else that I would change the sound that it makes because of this E. So same thing, let's take a look. Now we're getting into the words that end in a Y. Think about what we did when we added the ER. We changed the Y to an I and then added the ending. So if we take the word funny, change it to funniest. Funniest. Silly, silliest. And easy, easiest. I want to just talk about one more, a tricky one. The word is, the base word is long. Now the word long is tricky. It has that ng, mm, that n and that g. It often gets missed when we spell things, and oftentimes the n gets missed, and then it changes to log. Well, that's not what we want. And sometimes the g is missing, and then the word is Lawn. Nope. We want long. So let's make it longer. Well, now we actually hear that G. Longer. And then longest. So that is tricky. Go ahead and practice reading these words. Okay, now we're going to get into our new story. So I'm going to put that back. Here is our new story, a classic tale. It is called the hare and the tortoise. Now remember, hare is another name for a rabbit. This is not the hair on your head. I believe we went over homophones a little while ago, 
And this is just the other word, hair. It's just a new spelling. And then tortoise, another name for a large turtle. So in this story, um, you might have heard it before, I hope you have, these classic tales always have a lesson to be learned. I wonder if you know what the lesson to be learned is already. Think about it to yourself. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to follow along. If you have time, reread it yourself. That's how you will get more fluent and more accurate when you read, which is always the goal. The Hare and the Tortoise. A long time ago, there lived a hare and a tortoise. The tortoise was quiet and kind, but the hare was loud and liked to brag a lot. I'm the fastest animal of all, he would say. No one could ever beat me in a race. Hare bragged so much that no one believed him. You talk so much, said the frog, that you don't have time to, to race. I'm pretty fast myself, said the squirrel. Me too, said the raccoon. So think about hare. The author described the hare as bragging a lot. Now, if you know about bragging, it usually does not make the other people feel good that you're bragging too. It makes them feel pretty bad about themselves. So think about what Hare's doing. What kind of character, I'm sorry, yeah, what kind of character is Hare? Hmm. Let's keep reading. You're not as fast as I am, said the Hare. I'll race you. No thanks, said the frog. Not today, said the squirrel. I don't think so, said the raccoon. But quietly the tortoise said, I will race you. You must be joking, said the hare. You are the slowest animal of all. I'm not joking, said the tortoise. So the two agreed to race the next morning. Animals from near and far heard about the race. By the next morning, a crowd had gathered. Everyone was sure that the hare would win. After all, he was the fastest animal. But everyone hoped the tortoise would win. After all, he was the kindest animal. Soon, the hare and the tortoise were at the start line. The frog rang the bell, and the race began. The hare took off like a rocket. He ran past the tortoise and called, Goodbye, tortoise! This was this will be a very easy race for me. The tortoise walked slowly along the path. I will not listen to the hare, he thought. Let him say what he wants. I will just keep going. Hmm. What a nice tortoise. The hare was near the finish line. When he looked back, he could hardly see the tortoise. This is such a silly race, he said. That slow tortoise could never beat me. I can take my time and still win the race. How are you feeling about the hare? If you were the tortoise and you were near that hare, how would you feel right now? Hmm. So the hare stopped to eat some leaves. Then he drank some cool water from the lake. He ate and drank until he was very full. The hare started to feel sleepy. Ah, I think I'll take a little nap, he said. The tortoise is very far behind. I can rest and still win the race. So the hare sat down and closed his eyes. Soon he was fast asleep. He dreamed that he won the race. <laughs> Notice the thinking bubbles. He's thinking it. Is that what is going to happen? Hmm. Meanwhile, the tortoise walked slowly along the path. He had walked all day. He was very tired, but he didn't stop. Soon, he walked right past the sleeping hare. Is that the finish line? The tortoise thought, yes, it is. All the animals are cheering. I'm almost there. 
I like this sign from the mouse. Go, tortoise! <laughs> All the cheering woke up the hare. What is going on? he asked. Then he saw that the tortoise was almost at the finish line. Oh no, this can't be happening. No one could ever beat me in a race, he said. The hare jumped up. He ran as fast as he could, but it was too late. The tortoise crossed the finish line and he and won the race. I can't believe that you beat me, said the hare. The tortoise smiled and said quietly, slow and steady wins the race. And after that, the hare never bragged again. The end. So thinking about bragging, is it kind to brag? No. Sometimes when you brag, you're so um, believing in it that you, you become the hare and that you lose or that people end up not liking you. So it's okay to be proud of yourself. That's awesome. Be proud. But when you talk about it too much or you put it in people's faces too often, sometimes it makes others feel sad about themselves. So the lesson or the moral of this story was slow and steady wins the race. You don't always have to be the fastest and you don't have to brag. So the, the fun part about these classic stories is that they have a play version. Remember a play version is where there are characters and parts. Now there are six parts here, so if you have family at home, go ahead and take these parts, assign them to somebody, and I'll show you the pages in the play and you can read it and do it together as a family. What an awesome activity. Now if there are not six of you, Remember, people can double up, meaning having have two parts. Now, the narrator is really the person that tells the story. And then these characters are all of the dialogue within the story. For example, if we look at this last sentence in the book, and after that, the hare never bragged again. That would be coming from the narrator because a character did not say that. There's no quotation marks and no, like, he said that or said the hare. So, narrator, hare, tortoise, frog, squirrel, raccoon. I'll go through, go through these pages slowly. The end. Okay, so going back up to the beginning, just thinking about this story, I want you to retell what happens. Um, where's the setting outside? Uh, what was the problem in the story? Then how, how did it get resolved or what happened? Okay, thinking about these really helps us understand the story more. Okay, so feel free to reread that story yourself. I read it because it's a little bit more of a challenging book, and I just want to um, show you that fluent, accurate reading, although some of the times I did stumble on some words, and that's okay. You're not, I mean, I'm not perfect all the time. I bet you your parents aren't. It's okay. Just go back and reread it fluently, okay? So our next lesson, we are going to continue working with base words or root words and adding different endings to them, okay? And then we will get into a new book that is part of a series that is a little bit easier, so you will be in charge of reading it all by yourself. All right, thanks for tuning in. I miss you. I'll see you next time.